In this video, synthesis and integration of different elaborations on finding metropolitan solutions will be given by showing how some reference projects, or say best practices, dealt with it. There are many to show, but we will limit it to four examples, of which the first one will be e elaborated more in detail. This one concerns the residential area in Freiburg, Germany, known as Quartier Vauban. The area concerns a former French military base, which was redeveloped as a residential area with strong emphasis on sustainability, livability and citizen empowerment. The plan has a spatial layout based upon optimization of public transport, in this case a tramway in the spine of the district, and emphasis on leaving cars out of the residential streets as much as possible, thus providing centralized parking near to the main access roads. These strategic choices, here shown in the back of the picture, the glass parking garage, creates a lot of space for users and services. Cars, however, still are, a are able to access residential streets, for instance, to bring groceries or pick up people. This is, however, done via alternating streets in U-shape, accessed through the central spine in the district and thus not making any transit through the district's residential streets possible. Also, there are no parking plots available in these residential streets, so parking can be only temporal. Perpendicular to these residential streets, providing shortest and fastest routes through and outside the district, pedestrian and cyclist routes are situated along green axis. The result, spacious streets with little to no cars, lots of green and thus appreciated environments, which the residents do care for and which provides room for children playing and room for green and sustainable technologies to be integrated. But above all, it provides safe and livable outdoor environments. And actually, although the district is known as to be relatively dense, it provides a lot of space for all kinds of services, like for recreation, storage of bicycles, and for instance, as you can see here, enough room for waste separation in many different fractions. These services concern more centralized ones, such as a smart grid, public transport and amenities, but on the building block or community level, also several services are integrated. Take for instance, this mixed-use block called Wohnen und Arbeiten Vauban, in which apartments which with workshops and working places are integrated, but which also includes an innovative wastewater treatment concept with energy and nutrient recovery. This so-called anaerobic system takes wastewater streams for the building together with shredded organic waste and in a fermentation tank creates biogas, which on its term is used in the houses and for production of heat and electricity in a combined heat power plant. Remaining sludge with some essential nutrients is successively used by a farmer in surrounding very urban and rural areas. The system components are partly integrated in the outdoor green space as well as in the basement of the apartment building, as you can see here. This makes outdoor living environments not only nice green spaces to live in, but also integrates functional systems and significantly provides space for residents and children to recreate. But at the same time, as stated before, the district is quite dense. And this is in particular the case next to the central axis, the central spine, and next to amenities and public transportation. Here, multifunctional and multi-layered solutions have been created, with shops and working places below, and houses with rooftop gardens on top of that. And as you can see, 
roofs of these houses are covered with photovoltaic panels to generate electricity. But also these surfaces are maximized to improve the amount of electricity generated while leaving enough outdoor green space for residents. Which brings me to the second reference project of this video, the Dutch GWL area in Amsterdam. Here, an even more dense residential area, mixed with some working places, has been realized inside the city, on a redeveloped former drinking water production area. Multiple-story apartments are designed in such a way that good functional and visual connections with the green outdoor spaces are secured. Emphasis here was too on a car-free and green outdoor environment, with centralized parking facilities and above all excellent public transportation and pedestrian and cyclist routes. At the same time, existing buildings of the former functions are integrated in the plan. The alternating blocks in the inside area, interspersed with green community gardens, create nice and functional green outdoor spaces. Separations between semi-private or communal and semi-public spaces are realized with green hedges to avoid hard separations. The result is, among other, cherished community gardens. The Amsterdam project relates to the third project in this video, the district, the district Hammerby Sjöstad in Stockholm, Sweden. This district is larger, but similar in density. And besides of almost closed inside green areas for residents similar to Amsterdam, here the different communities and neighborhoods are built around a centrally positioned water area. On even larger metropolitan scale, you can see that such an approach with other neighborhoods to be developed is realized throughout the city as if it were a ring. Of course, this is also a result of available space in this ring outside the inner city, something which is seen more frequently in other metropolitan areas as well. Inner cities more and more do not offer sufficient space for a new building program, while these ring areas just outside inner cities often still dominated by water or road infrastructure with non-functional layout and industrial functions provide huge opportunities to match spatial, social and environmental improvements. Hammerby Sjöstad is also an excellent example of the concept of trying to include and maximize the concept of ecosystems services. Based on dense but lovely environments to live in that provide all kinds of additional functions. And this brings me to the fourth and last example in this video the B01 neighborhood in Malmö, also in Sweden. Similar to Hammerby Sjöstad and GWL Amsterdam, this also concerns a compact urban area development, a redevelopment, which tries to integrate multiple ecosystem services with green, car-free outdoor living environments. The area can be considered an island and is an extension to the existing city. It is also known for the Turning Torso building. But the district is foremost relevant as it includes a multitude of integrated solutions aiming to achieve improved sustainability and livability. Like for instance, as you can see here, integrated photovoltaics in the buildings and other innovative energy and mobility concepts. But also the inclusion of a green-blue instead of grey rainwater infrastructure with infiltration ponds integrated in the streets and with so-called bioswales and green ponds for treatment of, of grey wastewater. This all starts, of course, at the scale of the individual houses and streets, where rainwater infrastructure is carefully designed and disconnected from the wastewater infrastructure, leading to these decentralized facilities integrated in public space for the treatment. In the end, such an introduction of blue or green-blue infrastructure supports many qualities in the living environment, while addressing to sustainability and providing easier ways to cope with foreseen and unforeseen changes in precipitation due to climate change. 
But above all, it provides nice, livable living environments in, rela in relatively dense settings. In their synthesis of functions, uh, all four projects presented do address to the concept of urban metabolism, while providing ecosystem services to support both the communities as well as business cases and sustainability, and therefore can be seen as pioneering in this field.